Hi guys, I'm Paul McWhorter and I'm here with Arduino lesson number six. Uh, in this lesson we're going to be learning how to get input from a user into the Arduino. And so this is a really important lesson. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you learn a lot from it. Now we are going to continue to use this circuit here. If you need help in hooking this circuit up, that was in lesson number three. Also visit my website, top, top techboy.com. That's toptechboy.com. You can get the link down in the description of this video. And uh, on that site, if you will go to lesson number three, you can get sort of a step-by-step -step of hooking the circuit up. Or if you're more technically adept already, you can just see the schematic in this lesson, which is lesson number six. And so uh, go to toptechboy.com and uh, on lesson number six, you can see the schematic of this. And also this code that we've been developing in the first few lessons, you can get uh, in the first five lessons, you can get that code at toptechboy.com. All right, on uh, this, I've said this before and I'll say it again, it's really important for you to be putting this code in yourself. I step you through it step by step in this video. You really need to be typing the code in yourself. If you go to my site and you just copy it and paste it, by the end of this series of videos what you have learned to do is copy and paste. What you need to learn to do is develop your own code and the way that you learn to develop your own code is by coding, typing things in. Now to start with your code might look a whole lot like mine but it's important for you to be typing it in because when you type it in you will make mistakes and when you make mistakes you then have to find your mistakes and correct them and that is more important than anything else you will learn in these videos is how to make mistakes how to find the mistakes and how to correct the mistakes because that's what you spend your life doing as a coder or as a programmer making mistakes and then finding them and correcting them and that's called debugging and nobody writes perfect code and so what's really important is to start now early in your programming life to learn how to uh, debug, uh, debug your code so please 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 you're wasting your time if you simply just go in and copy and paste my code now I do know that some of you might be coming in the middle of these series and you don't want to go back and take the first five lessons. You just want to jump into this lesson. Well, for you, you can go to my website, toptechboy.com. Lesson six, you can get this code so that you're at least starting where we are, uh, where, where, where we're starting here. Basically, you can see what this code does is we set up a bunch of variables up at the top of the program, and those variables are things like let's particularly look at num yellow blink and num red blink. We're saying that we want num red blinks to be five and num yellow blinks to be five, and then basically the red LED is blinking five times if you look down here. And if you look at the yellow, it then blinks five, five times. We also, in the last lesson, learned how to start working with the serial monitor so that we can, uh, so that we can actually put information out on our screen that the user can look at. Just to recap, the way you get that is, uh, let's just say, let's just start real here, uh, real quick here with a review. To get this code down into the Arduino, we click this button. You can see the green bar starts going across as it's compiling, and then uh, everything's white, and so everything's good. And now to see the things that we're printing from the Arduino, we need to open the serial monitor. The way we open the serial monitor is clicking there, and then you can see that I start getting the information that's being printed by the Arduino. Quick recap of the program. Uh, we set the parameters up for the blink, like the, the red on time, the red off time, yellow on time, yellow off time, the parameters of the blink, and the numbers of blinks <clears throat> we set up up here at the top of the code. In our void setup, we put the things in the void setup that we want to do one time. And so things like opening the serial port, we do that <coughs> with a serial.begin. 115,200 is the baud rate. You can set that to a lot of different things, but what's critical is this number has to be the same as this number. That if those two don't match, it ain't going to work. Okay, what else do we do in the void setup? We do our pin modes. And the pin mode is basically just telling the Arduino whether we're going to be outputting to a pin or inputting to a pin. <coughs> On the Arduino right now, 
The pins that we're using are primarily these, which are our digital pins, pins 0 through 13. Those can be outputs or those can be inputs. So far, we've only dealt with them as outputs, and for a little while longer, we'll be dealing with them as outputs. But basically, anytime you use a digital pin, you need to set your pin mode. So we so Say, so we say pin mode red LED pin, which if we look up here was pin 9, so we're saying we want pin 9 to be an output, and yellow LED pin is pin 10, we want the yellow, yellow LED pin to be an output as well. Okay, so we've got things set up. Now in the void loop are the things that happen over and over and over, and so inside of that void loop we have two for loops. The for loops are the loops that we make ourselves. I think that was probably video four that we talked about uh, talked about for loops. And what you can see here is is that uh, in the loop, uh, in the void loop, we basically set up a for loop for blinking the LED. How many times do we blink the LED? We blink it num red blinks time, and then we have another for loop for blinking the yellow LED, and it blinks yellow, uh, num yellow blinks. And so we come through and blink the red one, num red blinks, and then we come to the next loop and we bl blink the yellow one, num yellow blinks. And then last time we learned how to print, and so you see that we have some print statements to do this printing over here. So as I'm sitting and watching, I think it's kind of cool because this is telling me exactly what's happening in here. And so I've got the circuit uh, working with the program, working with what you see, all uh, all working together. So all of a sudden, you know, we're getting some pretty we're getting some pretty neat stuff to happen here. Okay, now let's move on to what we're going to really be talking about in today's lesson. And this is this is neat stuff that we're doing. But uh, <clears throat> the one thing that's not so great is is that you can come in and like you can change things. Like let's say we want to have ten blinks. I'll say I'm, I want that. Or I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it fifteen blinks. Uh, I'm going to make it one blink on the yellow, and I'm going to make it 15 blinks on the red. Okay, so I can control that parameter, and I can come in here, and I can uh, uh, change those values, and I did not get it. I've got to replace this serial cable. It's too long. This USB cable is too long, and sometimes the program is not happy, and I have to click it a couple of times. Third time, maybe, is going to be a charm. And uh, let's see if we got it down in there. Yeah, okay, it downloaded. So you see, now we are blinking 13, 14, 15 times, and the uh, yellow blinks one. It goes 15 times, and it blinks once. So you see, we're mainly blinking the red one and the yellow one. So we can go, uh, we could go the other way. Let's say that we went 15 on the yellow. And let's say we went one on the red by changing our code there. Okay. And let's see if we can bring up the serial monitor. All right. And then you see we blink the red one, and then the yellow is going to blink 15. So you see, we can make it now do anything that we want. And as we looked at it last time, we could also come in here and we could change these other things, like how long for a given blink, how long is it. We can make longer blinks, shorter blinks, or we could have uneven blinks where it's on most of the time and off not so much of the time. So we've got a lot of flexibility here. But guys, this is the pro problem. At some point, you're going to be writing programs that, you, that you're going to let other people use. And so you need a better way of getting these numbers in. You can't just hand a person off the street your program and have them come in and start modifying the code. That would be a disaster. Right? You got to give a way for a person to interact, a person off the street to interact with your program, and you can't let them come in and be changing your code. And so we need a way to get input from the user that doesn't involve uh, uh, changing the changing the code. And so the way we do that is we do that by using the serial monitor. And so we're going to do that by by figuring out how to put a number in here and then having that number end up over here. And so there's a couple of things that we're going to have to do in order to allow that to happen. And the first thing is, I'm not going to change all of these because I'm going to give you examples, and then you as your assignment need to go in and get all of these different numbers or get some subset of these numbers from the user as user, as user input. Okay, so I'm not going to do every single one for you. I'm going to show you an example, and then you can go in and you can do the rest of them. 
Okay, but the two that let's do is the number of blinks. And so instead of assigning your variables here of num red blinks and num yellow blinks, what we're going to do is we're going to get those two numbers from the user. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to not assign a value to them here because we are going to <clears throat> assign those values over the serial port. Okay, now anytime you're going to use a variable, you still have to declare it. Okay, and so I am still declaring these variables because I am still using these variables. These variables are still the buckets, and they're the buckets that I'm going to put the values into. It's just I'm not going to put the values into them now, but because I know I'm going to use them, I still have to declare them. So what I need you to see is, is that there's two things that we are doing like here on yellow off time. I'm declaring the variable as an integer that's creating the bucket and putting the label on it, which is yellow off time. And then I'm also putting a number in it. The number that I'm putting in it is 250. Those are two things that I'm doing in this one line of code. But you can only do one if you want. And that is what I'm doing here. I'm only declaring the variable. I'm only creating the bucket, putting the label on it. It'll be later that I actually put a number into it, okay? But you always have to, in Arduino, you always have to declare your variables. So here we've declared them, but there's no value associated with them. And so now how do we get a value? Well, we're going to get the value from the serial port, okay? And to get a value from a serial port, there's basically three things that you have to do. And you've got to do all three of them, okay? The first thing is you have to prompt the user for uh, that you want data from him. And the way you do that is is that you can do that again just with a simple serial print line because basically you're going to send a message to that serial port telling the person that you want them to input data. And so here, and I'm going to do this at the top of the void loop to start with. So right when I come into this void loop, we're going to ask the user how many times do you want to blink the red LED and how many times do you want to blink the yellow LED? Okay, but there's three things to get that input that you have to do. And the first is you have to prompt the user that you're expecting input from him. We would do that with a print line statement. So I'm going to go serial.println. Why do we do print ln? Because we want it to advance to the next line and not just start going across the across the page. If you remember uh, video five, we kind of talked about that. So what is it that we want to print? Well, I'm going to print a string and I'm just going to directly put the string in here, which is going to be the prompt. And I'm going to say, please, <clears throat> uh, let's see. How about just we, we, we say, how many times do you want to, how many times do you want the red LED to blink? Question mark. And then I always like to put a space after it just so that I don't run things together. And then I need to close the quotes. I need to close the parentheses and I need semicolon. Okay, and so when this runs, this is going to go out to that serial monitor and it's going to put this statement. How many times do you want to uh, the red LED to blink? That's a string. <clears throat> okay, that is a string. And we are putting that string out on uh, the serial port. And we can do that because we turn the serial port on in our void setup. <coughs> so we prompt. Now, this is, this is the part that people really kind of mess up on, and it's something that you've just got to understand. You've got to understand that a program can run thousands and thousands of times faster than a person can do things. And so when you tell a person to do something, when, the, when you, your program or the computer or the microcontroller, the Arduino, tells the person to do something, you have to stop and wait. Okay, now you don't want to put a delay in because you don't know. One person might be pretty fast and might answer it in a second. Another person might be distracted and might not answer for a couple of minutes. So after you ask the person for input, you have to wait. Wait how long? Wait until they put the input in. And how do you do that? Well, how do you know if they put the input in? There is something that is called serial.available. And serial.available will be zero if they haven't put anything in. It will serial.available will be one 
if they had put something in. So what we need to do is just sort of test that serial dot available. And if it's zero, we need to continue to wait. If it's one, we need to move on to the next step. But what we got to do is we've got to wait here, right here. Before we come in and start doing this other stuff, right here, we have got to wait until that person has put the number in. So how do we wait? How long do we wait? Well, we do something new called a while loop. We wait while. Okay. And we're going to have some condition in the while loop. And the while loop is like a for loop. Okay. It's got a clause. Okay. And a clause starts with a <coughs> uh, curly bracket and it ends with a curly bracket. Okay. <coughs> a while loop starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket. A while loop will continue, and let me put an extra blank line in here, okay? A while loop will continue to do all the commands that are between the curly brackets as long as the condition that you put between those parentheses is true. So I need to put a I need to put a condition here. So like whatever condition I put here, this while loop is going to continue to loop and do everything between those curly brackets as long as that condition is true. Well, what is the condition that we're interested in? The condition that we're interested in is serial dot available. Open close with nothing in it. Okay, as long as that is equal equal to zero, which means while serial dot available is equal equal zero equal equal is just a uh, conditional test. So if you want to test if something is something, you use equal equal. So if you said serial dot available was equal to zero, that's like you're trying to set it equal to zero. If you want to test to see if it's zero, you use equal equal. And this is something as I help students and as, as I work with students, this is one of the most common reasons that there's a mistake in code is they do a conditional, a test, and they just use one equal and that throws everything up. So if you're asking, does serial available equal zero? It's equal equal. Does serial dot available equal equal zero? It's a question. Okay, so if you put two of them there, it's like a question. So what does this do? If, if serial dot available equal equals zero, then that means the person hasn't put the number in yet. What do you want to do? Go through the loop and go through it again. Now we look. Has the person entered the number yet? If it's equal to zero, no, they haven't. So this thing is going to sit and basically loop until the person puts a number in. Once the person puts a number in, then serial dot available would be one. This condition would be false, <clears throat> and it's going to break out and then come right here and do whatever the next command is that's after the while loop. Now the reason I know that this is a little confusing is normally in a while loop you would be doing something, right? I mean, I would be doing something here in this while loop, but this is an empty while loop. It's an empty while loop because the purpose of it is to just hang the program at this point waiting for that person to put the number in. So I guess I could put a comment in here because the comment doesn't do anything and just say twiddle your thumbs until user inputs data. Okay. <clears throat> now understand with the comment, the Arduino doesn't read it, the Arduino doesn't do anything, but just if you read the code, you see that you're just looping, 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 looping here until the person puts the number in. When the person puts the number in, serial dot available would become one. This statement would no longer be true you would drop out and you would come here. Okay, I hope you understand it, all right? But if you don't, the bottom line is serial, uh, while serial dot available equal equals zero, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. I'm gonna take this out now, okay? I'm gonna take that out. And in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and just put the empty clause right here. You see there's, uh, there is, nothing in that clause and so this just makes the code a little neater while serial dot available is equal to zero while no data has been entered do nothing and then it just sits at this line so if you if you if you're not following what i'm saying i'm sorry but just take my word for it this line of code will make the program wait here 
until the data has been entered. Once the date, so now we prompt the user to put the data in, we wait for him to put it in, he puts it in, what do we have to do? We've got to read it. It's like we say, throw me the ball, he throws us the ball, we got to catch it. Okay, so we said, send me the data, he sends the data, we got to read it. Okay, and how do you read it? Well, you got to say, you got to put it somewhere first. Well, where are we going to put it? What are we trying to read here? Am I even, yeah, what are we trying to read right here? Okay, what are we trying to read? The number of times that the red LED, that we want the red LED to blink. Well, where is that variable? That variable is num red blinks. So what we want to do is we want to say num red blinks, blinks, B-E-L-I-N-K-S. Yeah, I got to get everything just right. Number red blinks is equal to what we're going to go do is we're going to go read that number off of the serial port now. So we're going to say serial dot parse int. This is new stuff. This is new stuff. Okay. Serial dot parse int. And then we put our colon. All right. What is this doing? This is saying, go out to the serial port. Can we do that? Yeah, we turn the serial port on up here so it knows about the serial port. Read a number from the serial port is what this is saying. And what's really important here is, is that you need to make this command match the type of number that you're expecting. We are expecting what type of number? Num red blinks is an int. So we need to tell it to read an int. How does it read an int? Serial dot parse int okay and that puts the number then into num red blinks the variable so remember we create the bucket up here we create the bucket up here the bucket is empty it's got the label on the bucket num red blinks and then down here I say I'm gonna put something in the num red blinks bucket go to the serial part and read a what read an int an integer okay <coughs> if we had made this up here if we had made this up here a float, we would need to do a parse float. Okay, so your read statement needs to match the type of variable that you're trying to read. All right, you could do if you're reading an int, you do a serial dot parse int. If you're going to read a float, you do a serial dot parse float. Okay. Reading a string is a little bit differently. If you're going to read a string, like if we wanted to read this message, we would do a serial dot read string. Okay, serial dot read string. Now there's a hundred different ways to do this, and a lot of people go in and read things one character at a time and do all this crazy stuff, and that's probably a better way of doing it. But I want you to just learn something that's rock solid, that's simple to understand, and that will work for anything that you want to do. If you want to read an int, do serial.parse int. If you want to read a float, do serial.parse float. If you want to read a string, do serial.read string. So parse int, parse float, or read string. Okay, those are the three different ways that you can input something. Okay, so let's let's look at what we've done here. We've done serial.println, how many times you want the red to blink, then we wait, and then we read the number that they put in into num red blinks and then we're ready to loop down here num red blinks now we need to do that because remember we also took ooh i think that should not be like that okay i think i uh, need to be more careful in my code here okay so basically uh what we are doing here is we are Oh no, I'm sorry. Ignore that. Never mind. I was on the wrong line. Okay. Uh, never mind. All right, here, num yellow blinks, num red blinks, we declare. And then down here, what we do is we read the number of red blinks. So we prompt the user for input, we wait for him to input it, and then we read it in. Now, also, on num yellow blinks, we've declared that, but we haven't we haven't assigned a value to it so we need to get that value as well and so what we're going to do is we are going to copy this and then we're going to paste it because we want to do the same thing for yellow but we want to say how many times do you want the this time it's going to be yellow okay LED to blink and then we wait 
again, and then this time this is going to be <coughs> num yellow blinks. So how many times do you want it to blink? We prompt the user, then we wait, and then when he enters it, we read it into num yellow blinks. And so at this time, at this point with this code, we now know how many times the user wants to blink red and how many times the user wants to blink yellow. Okay? Will it work? I hope so. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right. Green, green, everybody's happy. Good deal. So now let's look at this serial monitor and what. Uh, where is my serial monitor? Come on. So maybe I've got to pop it up down here. Okay. So look at this. We have a message waiting on the serial monitor. How many times do you want the red LED to blink? I think I would like it to blink 10 times. Okay. How many. Uh, ooh. I look at that. I put that in the wrong spot because that should not have been there. Let's go back and look at this code. Okay. Uh, look at that. I sent this red message and I should not have done that. So let's take this cut. You see, that was that line that was causing the problem. And that should be down here like this. Okay, let me kind of put some blank spots here. So basically, and let's go in and put some comments here. I got a little sloppy there, didn't I? Okay, and so <clears throat> what are we doing here? Okay, we are prompt user for input, right? What are we doing here? We're putting our comments in. Wait for user input. And then after we get it, what do we do? Reuser input. Okay. And then here, what are we doing? We are prompt user for input. What do, is this step for? We wait for input. And then this time we read user input. Okay. Now, you see when I got kind of sloppy and going too fast and I wasn't putting my comments in, I ended up with this red message here. Okay. Up there where it should not have been. And so uh, now this should work. So we're going to serial print line and get the number of red blinks and then we're going to get the number of yellow blinks. And so now let's go in and see, see if this works. Yes, I do make mistakes. All right, so let's see if we can get our serial monitor. Pop it up here. Okay, so it's waiting for data. How many times do you want the red uh, LED to blink? You've got to put the number in here. We're going to say 10. Now you could either hit send or you could click enter on your keyboard. Let's go ahead and just click send here, see how that does. How many times do you want the yellow LED to blink? Let's say one time. Okay, and now when I send this, you be watching over here, and we should see this blink 10 times in one time. So send, okay, and look, that's blinking 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 1. Okay, let's try that again. It says, how many times do you want the red LED to blink? Okay, now why is it doing that? Because where we put this code in here, we put it at the top of the void loop. So it's going to do the red blinks, it's going to do the yellow blinks, and then it's going to come back up here, and then it's going to prompt us again. And so this time, let's do 10 on the red. Okay, how many times do you want the red to blink? 10. Okay, how many times do you want the yellow to blink? Let's do 10 on that. Okay, and then send that. Okay, and here we go, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and then it comes back over here and asks me again. So this time let's say 5. Okay, and let's say 5. We come over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, <clears throat> so you see it's working, and every time through it's going to ask me how many times do I want the red to blink, and how many times do I want the yellow to blink, all right, and then it'll stop every time, and so I can control it. 
Why does it stop every time? And let's talk about that a little bit. Well, where we put this, we put it uh, inside of our void loop. So here is our, I mean, we put it inside of our void loop. So at the top of the void loop, the first hot thing it's going to do is ask for the number of red blinks, and then it's going to ask for the number of yellow blinks. Then it's going to blink that many times red, and then it's going to blink that many times yellow and then it's going to print a little blank line to make our formatting nice and then this is the end of the void loop right here and the void loop is a loop so then what is that going to do that is going to come back up here to the top of the void loop and it's going to do this again what if we just wanted to set this up and we just wanted to ask the user one time for his input for like the number of red blinks and the number of yellow blinks and then just want it to sit and keep doing that over and over and over and not ask every single time. So if we wanted to just ask for the user input one time, where would we put things that we wanted to just do one time? Well, we could put it up here in the void setup. And so what if we got all this data here and we come up and let's just say we cut it because we don't want it to do it inside the void loop anymore. We want it to do it inside of the void setup. And uh, <coughs> I do like to try to keep my uh, indenting kind of neat here so that I see all this indented stuff is the setup. Uh, okay, and I also like to put kind of spaces in my program so I can kind of see things that are... Uh, so I can sort of see how things, do you see how, like I indent this so that it's natural for me to see this indentation is all the void setup and then the void loop I probably should go in and try to do indentation on, uh, on that as well to kind of keep things uh, <coughs> easy to read. Now it doesn't really matter the white spaces Arduino doesn't look at. If you're writing in Python, Python actually does commands based on the white spaces. So the indention is very important in Python. Uh, it's not important in Arduino, but I do think it's part of writing good and readable code and code that's easy to uh, easy to debug. So anyway, now we've moved those prompts up to the void setup. The void setup you do one time. So I think this time what it should do is it should ask us one time for the blinks and one time for the yellow blinks, and then it should just sit and blink back and forth. So let's let's take a look at this and see what happens. Okay, it looks like it downloaded uh, with everybody happy. And so let's see. How many times do you want to blink, blink the red LED? I'm going to say five. Okay. How many times do you want to blink the yellow LED? I'm going to say five. And then let's look over here and see if it does it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yellow, 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 yellow. Yellow, yellow, red, 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 red. Okay, so you see it's going back and forth, and also you can see that it's synced up nicely here with our uh, earlier print statements that are showing which uh, which LED uh, which LED is blinking. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you can see that where you put stuff in the code starts affecting what happens, and and you can see that if we in the void setup, you're kind of asking for a one-time deal, and then you do that over and over and over. But also, what you can do here is you can put it down here if you would want it to do, you could put it down here in the void loop if you would like it to do it separate every time. Okay, so your assignment is to play around with this and, and basically what I'd like you to do is go in and take all of these, uh, I mean don't input for what the pin numbers are because the pin number should not be something that the user inputs, right? You're the programmer, you're the one that set this circuit up, you have to tell it that red LED pin is 9 and you have to tell it that red LED pin is 10, but these other things like the red on time, the red off time, yellow on time, yellow off time, those would be things that you should enter from the uh, that you should enter from the uh, from the serial port and so what I want you to go in is, is modify the program where you ask the user for all of the information maybe you would ask for some of it in the setup maybe these blink parameters how long it's on and how long it's off you maybe only do that one time do it in the void setup but then maybe do the number of blinks every time and so you would do that in the void loop okay so play around with this and what I'm going to do for a grade is I'm going to see that you've gone and you you've put more parameters in there and also just make it do something else I mean just think hey this is what I want it to do and kind of come up with your own goals and strategies and then sort of develop some of your own code so 
At a minimum, I want you to do what I've done and change uh, everything except the pin numbers into things that you input. That's the minimum. But what I'd like you to do is kind of go beyond and say, well, what I would like my LEDs to do is I would like them to do this, and then this is the way my program looks. So you can sort of start taking this uh, your own direction. Okay, I appreciate it. This is six lessons down, and I will see you again very shortly in Arduino lesson number seven. Take it easy, guys.